teaching a Tailslindian Gardens and Elysian Seaman's teacher. After a long hiatus, it's time for Tailslindian Gardens trivia. Let's say hi to today's contestants. Known for so many songs including Hide and Seek from Hevering, London Borough Hevering, United Kingdom, Independent Heath. The Star Disney hit series and back from Phoenix, Arizona, Asher Angel. And finally, a car dealership salesperson from Cape Coral, Florida, Layla Tucker. And now, here's the host of Tales and Gardens Trivia, Tiffany Young. Thank you, Christian. Hello everyone. I'm so sorry that we had to take a three-month hiatus, just like Darren Pipster did back in May, which is on Memorial Day, with a few games of the classic Tailslandian Gardens trivia, hosted by Tailsland Martinson, followed by Darren Pipster, then Isabella Gonzalez, aired on Netflix, due to some extreme drama, when the TV series Darren Pipster and Friends first started, seasons 1, 2. 3, 4 and 5 were on TV, like we are right now, and season 6 and 7 are on Amazon Prime Video and the Netflix, the streaming platforms, however, with Thanksgiving Day fast approaching, our dollar values have changed, for round 1, it's $300 to $1,500, and for round 2, it's $600 to $3,000. This is due to Tailslandian Gardens trivia game rehearsals for 2022, when Darren Pipster and Friends will end after seven seasons and it's Caden time, a children's TV show, will start airing on TV, then in the second quarter of next year, on streaming platforms. Anyways, let's get started with the game. Question 1. For $300, the novel coronavirus responsible for the outbreak is called what? Layla? Is it COVID-19? Close, but no vaccine. Asher? Is it SARS-CoV-2? You're right. Officially named SARS-CoV-2, the novel coronavirus first identified by scientists in December 2019 has a different name than the illness it causes, which is known as COVID-19. You've had the bright idea, Layla. Question 2. For $600, Scientists believe that COVID-19 is spread primarily through what source? Layla, is it respiratory droplets that pass from person to person? You're right. Respiratory droplets that contain the virus, such as from an infected person who coughs, sneezes or talks, can land in the mouths or noses of people close by or possibly be inhaled into the lungs, causing illness. There's no evidence that pets play a significant role in spreading COVID-19. While the virus can live on surfaces, touching contaminated objects is not thought to be the main way people are getting sick, according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, or CDC. Question 3. For $900, COVID-19 can cause a range of symptoms, from mild to life-threatening. These three are commonly associated with the illness. Layla, is it all of the above? You're right. Fever, cough and shortness of breath can be signs of a COVID-19 infection. If you're experiencing symptoms, health officials say to stay home, self-isolate and seek medical care if you experience warning signs like trouble breathing or confusion. Question 4. For $1,200 to keep yourself and others safe, you should do what? Layla, unlike Maxine in game number three, didn't I want to say all of the above? You're right. The best way to avoid getting sick is to limit your exposure to the virus. That means forgoing any non-essential trips outside the home and minimizing contact with people outside your household. Careful hygiene, like keeping your hands and home surfaces clean, also plays an important role. Question 5. For $1,500 to properly clean your hands, experts recommend washing them with soap and water for at least this many seconds, or using a hand sanitizer that contains at least this many percent alcohol. Asher? Are they 20 and 70? I'm sorry, you are over by 10 in alcohol percentage in hand sanitizer. Layla? Are they 20 and 60? You're right. Asher was right. 
but was 10% over in hand sanitizer alcohol. To wash correctly, use soap and water and leather for at least 20 seconds, that's about two rounds of the happy birthday song. If you can't get to a sink, use a hand sanitizer containing at least 60% alcohol, covering every part of your hands and rubbing until dry. Question 6. For $300. Following social distancing guidelines means all of the following are acceptable, except what? Imogen, is it walking the dog? I'm terribly sorry, but that's incorrect. Layla, is it going to a group meeting or event, as long as no one shakes hands or hugs? That's right. Social distancing refers to a set of practices designed to slow the spread of illness in your community, like staying six feet away from others in public. While essential trips out of the house, including grocery shopping, dog walks or doctor's visits, are okay, and Imogen, you've had the bright idea. Experts say that group gatherings of all kinds, including concerts, classes, social events and worship services, should be suspended. Question 7. For $600, while people of all ages can be sickened by the novel coronavirus, those at increased risk of serious illness include who? Layla, are they both older adults and those with pre-existing conditions? You're right. Older adults and people of any age with pre-existing conditions, including respiratory and non-respiratory diseases, are at increased risk of COVID-19 complications. Babies and young children make up a small percentage of infections in the United States and typically have mild symptoms. Question 8. For $900, what is a payday loan? Asher? Is it a high interest, short term loan? You're right. Payday loans are short term loans, usually for two weeks to one month. Effective interest rates, including fees, can go as high as 391%. Question 9. For $1,200 who tends to take on payday loans? Imogen, are they workers who are short on cash and need a loan for a specific period, such as two weeks? That is right. Borrowers tend to be low-income adults who need a loan to bridge the gap until the next payday, which is usually a two-week period. <laughs> Question 10 is a bonus question. You may gamble between 300 and 3,000. How much to wish your gamble? I would like to gamble $2,100. Okay, if you want to catch up, for $2,100 you typically get a payday loan from who? Is it a storefront lender? You are right. Payday loans generally are provided by storefront lenders with neon signs that promote these offers though they are also available from online payday lenders. Question 11. For $300, what is the highest rate payday lenders can charge members of the military? Imogen, is it 75%? I'm sorry, but 75% would be really, really crazy. Asher, is it 36%? Right you are. Payday loans offered to service members and their dependents can't be higher than 36%, including most fees and charges. Question 12. For $600, how many states limit the rates payday lenders can charge? Layla, is it 17, plus the District of Columbia? Correct. The states and D.C. cap payday loan interest at 36% or lower. Question 13. For $900. In 2019, what was the average interest rate on a payday loan, if it was not controlled by a rate cap law? Asher? Is it 48%? Sorry, that would be a crazy idea that year. Anyone else want to answer? Well, I guess Layla didn't want to answer. The correct answer is 391%. That compares to the average 10.63% finance rate on personal loans at commercial banks at the same time. Question 14. For $1,200 does taking out a payday loan hurt your credit? Asher? Is it no? That is right. 
payday loans generally are not reported to the three major national credit reporting companies, so they are unlikely to affect your credit scores, unless the loan goes to a debt collector. Question 15. For $1,500 according to the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis, which of these had more locations in 2017? Layla, is it McDonald's? No, it would be crazy if that popular fast food chain had more locations than the other. Asher, are they payday loan storefronts? You are right. There were 14,348 payday loan storefronts and 14,027 McDonald's locations in 2017, the Fed said. You had the bright idea again, Layla. That's the end of round one. We have Asher in third place with $1,800, Imogen in second place with $2,700, and Layla in the lead with $3,900. However, some players were in the negative, in, out, and back where they started from, upon starting the game. We'll move on to round two right after I conduct contestant interviews while I help my mother with the Thanksgiving desserts. Well, I guess I missed my chance to make the desserts, but I'll make a side dish for everyone to enjoy, though. Anyways, Imogen Jennifer Heap is an English singer, musician, songwriter and record producer. Her work has been considered pioneering in pop and electro pop music. I am classically trained in piano, cello and clarinet starting at a young age. I began writing songs at the age of 13 and, while attending boarding school, taught myself music production. After being discovered by manager Mickey Modern while attending the Brit School, I signed to independent record label Alma Sounds at the age of 18 and later began working with experimental pop band Acacia. I released my debut album, an alternative rock record, I Megaphone, in 1998. In early 2002, me and English record producer Guy Sixworth formed the electronic duo Fru Fru and released their only album to date. Details, from 2002, my second studio album, Speak For Yourself, was released in 2005 on my own label, Megaphonic Records, and was certified gold in the United States and Canada. The album spawned three singles, Headlock, Good Night and Go, which became my highest charting single as a lead artist on the UK singles chart, and Hide and Seek which was certified gold in the United States and gained popularity after being used in the Fox teen drama television series The O.C. My third studio album, Ellipse, from 2009, peaked in the top five of the Billboard 200 chart and received mostly positive reviews. This was followed by my fourth studio album, Sparks, from 2014. In 2017, I then reunited with Six with as part of Fru Fru. I developed the Mimu Gloves, a line of musical gloves, as well as a blue based music sharing program, Missilia. I also composed the music for the West End and Broadway play Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. Over the course of my career, I have received two Grammy Awards, one Ivan Novello Award and one Drama Desk Award. In July 2019, I was awarded an honorary doctorate from Berklee College of Music. Thanks Imogen. Oh, and to the audience and viewers, don't forget to watch Harry Potter and the Cursed Child live in Huntsville, Alabama this Thanksgiving weekend. Okay, on to the next one. Asher Dov Angel is an American actor. He began his career as a child actor in the 2008 film Jolene, starring Jessica Chastain. He is known for his role as Jonah Beck in the 2017 Disney Channel series Andy Mac. In 2019, Angel portrayed Billy Batson in the DC Extended Universe film Shazam. At the age of five, I appeared in the 2008 film Jolene. I started my career by appearing in numerous theater productions. At the age of seven, Desert Stages Theater held auditions for the musical Oliver. And, with my parents' permission, I auditioned and won a role in the production. My mother promised to take me to Los Angeles if he put in the work and did 30 local shows and I went on to act in multiple plays including The Little Mermaid, Susicle, Mary Poppins, and Into the Woods at the Desert Stages Theatre in Scottsdale. My mother kept her promise, 
and I traveled to Los Angeles where, at age 12, I auditioned for and won the part of Jonah Beck in the Disney Channel television series Andy Mack. My whole family moved to Utah to accommodate filming for the series. In April 2019, I played the lead role of Billy Batson, with Zachary Levi starring as his adult superhero alter ego, in the film adaptation of DC Comics Shazam. The film, a further installment of the DC Extended Universe, was released to critical acclaim. I released my debut single One Thought Away, featuring Wiz Khalifa, on June 6, 2019. Oh. And by the way, Andy Mack is my favorite show on the telly as well as your single. Thank you Asher for taking part on my favorite show. Now, we have Layla Tupper, who always sings emotional songs to K9.5 members in their album, Depression, which always hits me when I have mental health issues, like Darren Pipster does all the time. In the classic Sims, there are three options with the baby, feed, sleep, and play. I did all the three to Gershwin when he felt sad. I then sang him a lullaby and recorded it in the recording studio with K9.5 and Christina Berman. And that's how my stage name latter is formed. And yes, it had the what to say portion with only the first part of it played in it repeatedly. I was awarded for my success in K9.5's depression album. Oh, that made me felt sad. Don't worry, he'll be alright in his crib. Just shitting. Anyways. It's time for round two. Dollar values are doubled in this round so bear with me here. Let's begin. Question 16. For $600, how many models of electric cars are available in U.S. markets? Layla? Is it 26? You are right. There are more than 20 battery electric vehicle models available in the U.S. With more projected to come online in the near future. Tesla? Hyundai and Audi are the only manufacturers that sell more than one model of electric vehicle. Question 17. For $1,200 how many electric car charging stations are there in the U.S.? Layla? Is it 3,500? I'm sorry, that is wrong. Immigan? Is it 43,000? You are right. There are approximately 43,000 public charging stations in the U.S., according to data from the U.S. Department of Energy. Most are concentrated in California, which has between 12,000 and 1, 3,000 stations. Question 18. For $1,800, when was the first electric car produced in the U.S.? Asher? Is it 1983? Sorry, it has to be in the 19th century, not the 20th century. Immigan, is it 1890? You are right. In 1890, William Morrison, a chemist living in Des Moines, Iowa, debuted the first successful electric car. The vehicle had room for six passengers and was capable of speeds of up to 14 miles per hour. Question 19. For $2,400 what percentage of global car sales are electric vehicles, or EVs? Layla? Is it 7.9? Sorry, you're 5.3% over. Asher? Is it 2.6? You are right. The latest data shows that electric vehicles make up about 2.6% of global automobile sales. This number has increased in recent years. And in the first half of 2021, growth of EV sales in the U.S. outpaced sales in the broader auto industry. Asher, since you lost $1,800 and gained $2,400, how much of your $2,400 do you wish to gamble? $3,000. Okay, Esther. Question 20. For $3,000, which U.S. state has the highest number of registered EVs? Is it California? Guess what? You're right. California has 425,300 registered EVs, or 42% of the total number in the U.S., which is 1,019,260. Despite having just 12% of the U.S. population? 
The other top states are Florida, Texas and Washington, each of which has approximately 55,000 registered EVs. Question 21. For $600, which country has the highest number of EVs? Layla, is it the United States? Close, but it ain't our country. Anyone else? I guess Emigan or Asher didn't want to answer that, because that one is tricky. The correct answer is China. Almost half of the world's EVs are in China. The country, which has invested heavily in electric cars, recently announced that by 2030, 40 percent of the cars it produces will be electric. Experts predict that the resulting surge in the production of EV cars and batteries will help drive down costs for both globally. Anyways, let's head on to the next question. Question 22. For $1,200 how many miles can the longest EV battery run without charging? Asher? Is it 250? I'm sorry, you're 150 miles less. Layla? Is it 400? You are right. The Tesla Model S Long Range Plus made headlines in 2020 when it became the first electric vehicle to receive an EPA range rating above 400 miles. Most EVs have a battery range of 200 to 300 miles per charge. Question 23. For $1,800 what is the average annual cost to purchase and run an electric vehicle? Is it $9,406? You are correct. On average, it costs $9,406 a year to run an electric vehicle, according to Self Incorporated a financial technology company. This includes the purchasing cost of the car as well as charging costs. Additional expenses for EVs include the cost of a home charger, commercial charging, fees and EV taxes. Charging costs currently vary more widely than gasoline prices, but those costs have declined in recent years. Question 24 for $2,400 which of the following should never be divulged to a stranger, especially someone who contacts you out of the blue? Layla, do you believe it is all of the above? I believe you're right. Safeguard such data, known as Personally Identifiable Information, or PII, since it fuels financial fraud. Your date of birth, driver's license number, credit card and PIN numbers, and other sensitive information should be held close to the vest. Question 25. For $3,000 cyber thieves who try to steal your money or personal identification information, or PII, can use technology to disguise which of these? Layla, I believe I am going to say all of the above again, am I? Yes you did and you are right. Cyber criminals use tricks to hide behind information that may appear authentic but is not. Phone numbers can be spoofed to make it appear it's the Social Security Administration, or even the local police, calling. Call the agency back on a number you know is genuine. Don't just Google an agency for its telephone number and assume it's real, because web searches can cough up fake phone numbers. Question 26. For $600, which of these businesses suffered the biggest data breach of all time? putting billions of its customers' sensitive data at risk. Asher? Is it Yahoo.com? That is right. The estimated number of accounts breached at Yahoo is 3 billion. At Marriott International, 500 million. At Adult Friend Finder, 412.2 million. And at Credit Bureau Equifax, 147.9 million, according to CSO which advises chief security officers on cybersecurity. Question 27. For $1,200 the most common types of scams reported to FBI's Internet Complaint Center in 2019 were what? Immigrant? Is it lottery, sweepstakes or inheritance scams? Good guess, but not the right scams we're looking for. Asher? Are they phishing scams? Right you are. Phishing involves criminals sending emails from seemingly legitimate institutions in an attempt to get you to divulge personal identification information, 
or PII variations on phishing include phishing, which involves phone calls or voice messages, smishing, which utilizes text messages, and farming, which sees cyber thieves direct consumers to bogus websites that seem legitimate. Question 28. For $1,800 the Federal Trade Commission, or FTC, examined fraud reports in 2019 and found most often criminals first contacted victims by doing what? Layla, is it calling them on the phone? You are right. Be wary of telephone calls from strangers. It's the most common way for crooks to initiate contact, according to the FTC's Consumer Sentinel Network Data Book 2019. Question 29. For $2,400 how much money was lost to fraud in 2019, according to reports sent to the FTC's Consumer Sentinel Network Data Book? Immigan, is it $1.9 billion? You are right. Nearly $667 million of this total was lost to imposter scams alone. Final question, which is question 30, for $3,000 which former director of the CIA helped foil a Jamaican lottery scam, leading to the arrest and conviction of the perpetrator, who was sent to prison in 2019. Asher, is it William Webster? You are right. Webster, who earlier led the FBI told AARP in 2019 about the Jamaican who called him saying he had won a $72 million prize and a Mercedes-Benz. The crook wanted $50,000 up front and made violent threats to get the payment. Webster, who is in his 90s, worked with a cadre of younger agents to crack the case. <laughs>
I believe you are correct. Released five days before the launch of Apollo 11, David Bowie's 1969 Ode to Major Tom was his first single to chart in Britain. Bowie called Hetfield's Space Station video possibly the most poignant version of the song ever created. You gambled everything you have, and that doubles you to $13,800, putting you in the lead as we go to Asher Angel with an even $9,000. What did you come up with? Is it David Bowie's Space Oddity? I think you're correct. So how much did you add to your amount? $7,200, and that, my friend, puts you into the lead with $16,200 unless Layla does something pretty interesting. Finally, we'll go to Layla with $10,500. What did you put down as your answer? Is it David Bowie's Space Oddity? Well, I believe you're correct. And that means if you bet more than $5,700, you'll become the winner. How much did you add? $10,101? Whoa, Nilly. You will have a new record of a whopping $20,601. And even though you started the game on a bad note, you ended it by setting a new record with the most money won. Layla Tucker, you are today's winner with $20,601. Way to go, Layla. I am so proud of you. Asher, you will go home with $2,000, and Imogen will go home with $1,000. And I know Layla has lots of money for Black Friday shopping. We'll host another game as soon as we can. Do you know what I am thankful for this year? You. I am Tiffany Young. Enjoy the rest of your Thanksgiving weekend, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Tales of Indian Gardens trivia is filmed with the Tales of Indian Gardens and original scene and stage of Tales of Indian Gardens and original scene and studios in Chaseville, Georgia, is inspired by Jeopardy, created by Murray Griffin, announced by me, Christian Reese, hosted by Tiffany Young, and the executive producer is Mark Hennessy. Tales of Indian Gardens trivia is copyright the 2021 Tales of Indian Gardens and original scenes, all rights reserved. The video is over. But it doesn't have to be. Click on the subscribe button and hit the bell button to get notified for every video we produce on a certain...